Hey guys, Hannah here from Reality Awareness. Ooh, I press live a bit early. How interesting. <laughs> we are live for the Heart Chakra Consciousness. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are we all feeling that we have dropped into the heart? Yeah, I think a lot of people have been feeling a lot of grief, a lot of like, oh, what's going on? It's like the reality of the heart is starting to really kick in. Hey. Amanda, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, let me let me share this. Curious how you guys are feeling on the heart chakra. Yes, definitely. Yes, a lot of emotions coming out. It's kind of like it here at the throat. We like come into the full, um, full like truth and alignment of who we are. And when we really listen to what our truth is and if we've been swallowing someone else's truth or whether it is our truth that we've been swallowing at the heart, it's kind of like, whoa, like this kind of big wake up into like, have I actually been living what's in alignment for me? Is my heart real? Is, is, is my heart real? Like, but is what I've been living real? Yeah, it's like we're starting to come down to the truth. And I just, when I was setting up here, I was like, oh, we did the third eye chakra at rocks too. And I was like, how interesting, like grounding down the reality into the connection of the earth. Yeah, seeing the truth, the reality, and now feeling the truth. Yeah, yeah, Laura's a bit sentiment thinking of past relationships. Yes, lots of that stuff coming up. Hey, and it's interesting, yeah, past relationships, relationships. The heart's very connected to relationships because that's where we feel that's where we feel connected or not to, right? Like the heart is all about connection, connection with the earth, connection with like feeling connected, yeah? Hey, Sarah. And so when we don't feel connected, like it's usually, you know, like our first port of call to connection on this planet is, is through a relationship, the relationship with our mother, the relationship with our father. Like it's the first relationship that we experience when we come into this life, right? All right, let me share this before I keep talking anymore. Okay, where are we? Okay, why is it not that? Okay, there we go. Doing all these crazy things. Okay, give me two seconds. I concentrate because is not letting me do anything oh my goodness <laughs> so frustrating hey Laura is there two Laura's here yeah there is all right I also have the heart chakra consciousness meditation but it's actually the Claire sentient meditation so a lot of you guys well, I would imagine a lot of you guys that follow me are in my groups have the get clear program you guys would have the clairsentient meditation, but if you're not in any of my groups or this is all new for you, um, the clairsentient meditation. And you know, our clairsentience, like people say, is like your gut feeling, right? It's your gut feeling that um, you're feeling about, you know, like people say, oh, I didn't listen to my gut again. It's actually your heart. And it's that heart, that heart feeling is called your clairsentience, yeah? I think I'm going to talk a bit about that for a moment because that's really important and why some people get really confused about listening to their heart or they follow their heart and then they're like mind will kick in and they're like oh I can't do that right and it's interesting what part of your brain is actually talking to that part of yourself and shutting yourself down and you know not letting yourself follow your own heart right or trusting your own heart. Why don't we trust our own heart, right? Let's have a little bit of a talk about that. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. There we go, it looks better. All right. Hey guys, I see you joining live. All right, so at the heart chakra, as I said, it is your feeling center. This is where we feel, this is where we, you know, and a lot of people are highly clairsentient. Um, a lot of people, you know, they get tripped up and they're like, I can't see colors or I can't see this. And I'm like, well, you probably feel everything like a sponge, right? Hey, Emma. 
and they're like oh yeah I feel everything yeah and this is the thing when we you know like doing a, a meditation or a visualization or like oh I didn't really get much information or I didn't see anything I didn't see colors or I didn't see that and I was like yeah but you probably feel it right you probably feel the color blue yeah uh, hey Tamsin and so when we you know like feel feel into this stuff yeah it's it's a practice and the, the, the part about the practicing is the trusting it right so it's like when we see something but it's like well I don't see that blue sparkly thing but I can feel it and I just know that it's blue so therefore I see it because we kind of see it in our mind's eye because we know what the color blue looks like we can feel what the color blue looks like and so therefore we put an image together and we see it right and this is the thing with your spiritual organs and getting to know your chakras and amplifying your intuition is understanding how we receive our information through our crown through our cleccorpus it's knowing through our third eye seeing through our hearing um, and our feeling it's like when we understand how all these organs work then we can put them all together and this is why you know I teach say like get clear or trust the intuition because yes we can just work on the third eye and open our third eye and everything like that and I'm like well what about the other organs like they're all there and let's use them and amplify that right so why don't people trust their heart tell me give me some ideas why why don't people trust their heart why don't people trust their gut feelings why why do we like go through and we're like oh yes like you know I'm gonna do this thing and then you know like we're getting feelings about it and we don't listen and then we get down the track and we're like oh my god I did it again like why didn't I listen to my gut feeling like why do we do that give me some examples and give me some love hearts if you're like yep I've done that before <laughs> even if you're watching the replay yes fear yeah, yeah fear of fear of getting in trouble fear of getting killed like past life stuff surfacing fear of um, anything really yeah fear of scared we get scared to trust ourselves yes yep self-confidence yeah trusting ourselves and like and believing in ourselves and ultimately what is that like when we don't trust ourselves right so when we are scared of trusting ourselves and we're um, you know like we're like okay go down this path right because oh and what we're usually doing is we're listening to other people's um, opinions the guilt can be the driver I wrote a, a blog about this just yesterday right and it's kind of like we don't want to hurt other people and we've got like these roles running and this is where we've just come out of the throat right and we've become aware of all these shadow parts running the show for example we've become aware of these parts of ourselves that will like you know please other people and this is where we you know don't listen to our intuition in our heart because these parts are running the show because in our childhood or somewhere along the line we've been shut down for feeling for having a voice about what we're feeling yeah so if you think back to when you were a child what what happened when you were upset or angry or wanted something what was the natural response from around you oh you can't have that or no you don't deserve that or you didn't do this good enough so no you can't have that or um your it's not i don't know if it's like your opinion doesn't matter but basically oh no that's not right i'm right you're wrong you know like all of that space of like being shut down for having our heart speak so at the at the throat and this is where the throat and heart are so interconnected yeah and they're both the number four chakra in when we are shut down for having our voice this is where this shuts down and then these that's where these shadow parts yep completely shut down yes where it's like all these shadow parts start running the show and this is where I say where you know a lot of people are cut off at the throat and they live in their head and they're not they're not um, their heart shut down yeah ignored yep yep not listened to not heard so what happens when we shut like we're like oh we don't like we say for example like being ignored or completely shut down then these shadow parts go oh well as a mechanism of survival right as a survival space I need to like 
be, be silent, not have a voice, just do this, like act this way, be this way, so that I would be accepted by, by my mother, by my father, by the people who are your point of survival when you're a child. So if I shut down, then I'm gonna survive, basically, right? And this is where a lot of these, you know, people always talk about the ego and being in their ego. It's kind of like, yeah, are you authentically sharing your heart? Or do you have these layers on top, right? And this is where they talk about like the um, the illusion, like the illusion of life. It's kind of like we can like be shut down and be living from here and not here. And this is where, you know, like we can go along and illness starts to happen in the heart. A lot of heart attacks happen um, to people who don't let their heart, you know, have a voice and they just say like working all the time or being this sort of person to be this so that, you know, but it's like, oh, I need to do that. And they don't even let their heart do what the heart wants. So when we actually start to like integrate these shadow parts, and this is what I was saying in my blog just yesterday, right? That when I let myself feel my full heart and allow my heart to actually express what it wants to express, to actually acknowledge what my heart wants. And I'm gonna use me as an example with this what I've discovered in the last week at the throat and all these people turning up in my reality, my field, like needy people wanting a relationship. And I'm like, eh, go away. <laughs> what I discovered is like, oh, there's a part of me in my heart that I've been denying and pushing away in this subconscious, right? That actually wants a relationship, a loving relationship. And I think the part of me that shut my own self down, that put the cage on my own heart, like around it, was because I didn't want another shitty ass relationship. I didn't want another codependent, crappy ass, abusive fucking relationship. Like I didn't want that. And so I was just like, well, I'm not gonna have any fucking relationship then, fine, right? But there's a part of me that wants to experience a loving relationship. And so because I'd been denying that, shutting it down, I'm like, no, it's fine. Like shut the heart down. Like, no, nope, I'm fine. I can just do it without, like I've just like dis disassociated almost from my heart and from my calling and from my needs right rather and then this part has been on top so when i spoke about pretty sure i spoke about this in the throat chakra like there's a part here and then there's a part underneath yeah it's almost like a double layer of you know your own self shutting your own self down and locking it away in the cage right and so and it's usually a part of us that needs to be heard that doesn't want to be heard again and like when we can actually hear this part well i'm protecting this part right in a way but this part's really sad and so we can have that deep grief now now let's talk about the grief okay because when we obviously tap into the heart the first thing that people start to do is feel now that is really uncomfortable yeah we might be really good at feeling other people's energies and we take on other people's energies and we're like ah what's going on and we're like really good at taking on other people's energy and feeling everyone else's energy but when it comes to feeling the stuff in our own heart whether it's our desires or whether it's our grief, we're usually eh, putting, pushing them away. There's these parts here, right? And then so we're feeling everyone else's stuff, but we're denying this. But everyone else's stuff will have a resonance with this part here. Yeah? And everyone else's stuff that you're feeling is only reflecting what you've buried. So when we can go in here and actually acknowledge and bring this up, all of a sudden, this is like, this is free, like this is free. It's not buried anymore, it's acknowledged. And so the whole energy changed from being disassociated, shut down and pushed down and shutting down your own voice because that's what you're used to. Say for example, that example, Ali, when you said completely shut down and ignored, you're ignoring your own heart's voice. Yeah, because that's the way you've been trained to be in the world, right? And so when we face those parts of ourselves wanting that loving relationship wanting that instead of it being shut down and the grief and then feeling everyone else's grief because that's what we've buried when we can bring that up and actually feel our own grief and actually acknowledge you know like that we actually want a loving relationship that um you know like actually yes all of that was hurt and all of that was out of alignment and that stuff didn't you know work like when we can really pick apart all of that then we can shift the whole energy in that thread and then we can actually 
fulfill and create and actually like it, it automatically fills itself with love because in our own heart is so full of love, right? And if we talk about, you know how we're talking about, gosh, it must've been on the throat chakra that, you know how I was saying like the subconscious, like the conscious is 10% and the subconscious is 90% and then Leanne, you said that, was it Chiron or something, had said that actually it's moved to 33% because I was like, yeah, it feels like it's actually bigger now. It actually doesn't feel like the conscious is 10% because the whole world's doing so much personal development. Everyone's fucking waking up. I'm like, it's gotta be, it feels a bigger percentage. And so thank you for that, Leanne. You said that it was, Chiron had mentioned it was 33% and I'm like, yeah, that feels right, right? So the rest of the subconscious is still running the show. But when we actually turn and face these shadow parts that actually want that love, they want to be heard, they, you know, like they don't want to be heard again, like that's a need as well, right? When we get clear on our own needs, we start to get clear on our values, what's important to us, how we learn to set boundaries, right? And remember I said at the ear chakras, I'm like, if you guys have been dealing with boundaries, it's the, um, it's the, is connected to the heart connected to the base and being like listening to what your truth and your reality is now at the heart what's next after the heart oh it's the solar plexus that's where we feel self-worth self-confidence self-respect um you know being um, empowered rather than being disempowered yeah and being a victim so it's like coming into instead of like oh well that relationship i you know was this and that and this and that it's like kind of like okay yeah that's really getting you clear because whatever we whatever we experience in our reality that we don't like and we don't want, it's actually a gift showing us what we do want, right? So, and, and there's a transition period from experiencing all this stuff of like, I don't want this and this is when we usually like shut this down and it's like, oh my God, that's so bad, I don't wanna do that again and then we kind of get stuck here almost and then when we can dive in and unpick all that, well, yes, this happened, this happened, like, you know, pull all this apart and then get clear on what you, you know, like that you do want a relationship. And then like there's this transition period. So this is all the shit stuff. Then you've buried it and then we're gonna pull it back up, unpick it. And then there's a transition period kind of here, right? And it's like getting clear on like, okay, well, I didn't want that. Well, what's the opposite of that? Well, it's actually deep connection and communication. Well, I didn't want that thing as well. Well, what's the opposite of that? Well, it's actually, um, you know, someone to have fun with or something, right? Rather than crying all the time. I want to laugh all the time in a way. And then, so it's kind of like you start getting clear on what you do want. Now, also what, when you experience something of what you don't want, it's showing you your values and what's important to you. And that is your solar plexus. Yeah, that's your values. That's, you know, your boundary lines. Like that's what's really important to you. Yeah. 17 people and 17 minutes. I almost put, <laughs> I almost put my angel numbers phone in the, in the, in my bag. Can this be with your health? hundred percent. It can be with your health because when we shut down a part of ourselves, when we shut down our own voice, our own heart, a shadow part that's been not heard. And so we bury it down because as a child, we were taught that that was the way to be, to receive love. Um, and because we're shut down parts of ourselves, like if those parts aren't looked at, tended to, um, cared for, like what happens is that that turns into illness. Like all illness in the body is something buried in the subconscious that you have just not wanted to look at. And when it hits the physical body, that's your like subconscious going, Hey, you're going to wake up now. I've had to like hit your physical body. You're going to pay attention and deal with this now. Um, so yeah, shadow work, um, the all body activation and repair meditation, like you can literally use those meditations and literally go into your illness and speak to it. Like that's a shadow part. Yeah. Um, so you can use the shadow meditation for lots of things like that. So Emma says, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for any man. I'm too busy fighting me. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's perfect. Right? Because when we go through what we don't want, that's what I mean. Like we get to this point where we're like, nah just sorting out me and then it gets to a point where we're like actually what is this stuff I've buried here and then we can start clearing that out so it's awesome to get your self-care up and sort out your life first it's perfect perfect Jeanette says yay glad I made it yay glad I made it <laughs> what did I say glad you made it oh my goodness I need to keep reminding myself this now more than ever yes big energy shifts yes 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 it is huge right I just got woken up this morning from my subconscious saying, let's go, Leanne, I love it. On your only day off. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, Ali. 
later. Uh, so working out for my subconscious telling me let's go and be productive and deal with my problems while I'm not working. Yes, yes. The thing I want to say too is, um, and this is stepping into um, like where the heart feels, is that especially on a nine to five, you know, sort of lifestyle, and this is why the world is, uh, I don't know if caught up or in the chaos or anything is the right terminology, but there's a lot of people like the world runs on a nine to five work day, right? And then every, at the end of the week like a lot of people you know not not everybody but a lot of people like go go out clubbing drinking and then they go back to work and they just do it all again and repeat the cycle and you know what I mean right now I want to point out that the thing is here around when the heart's feeling the heart is feeling all the time right it's not there's not a time we don't stop feeling yeah it's a time the only time we don't feel is when we have shut off our connection to our feeling, yeah, our consciousness to the feelings, yeah? And that's when we kind of bury stuff, what have you. Now, there's nothing wrong with burying stuff. It's just that when we become aware of it, it's just time to deal with it. It's not like, hey, you buried it, you're bad. Like it's not, it's just like, oh, it's time to deal with this. I didn't even realize I buried that, right? Because at the time, the part of the grief cycle and this is so important to understand right if you haven't read my article on how do I let it go please send me a message I went into detail about um, that in specifics because anything like the grief cycle is like there's four or five stages right number one is shock okay shock of the thing that's happened then we kind of come into like anger and like, oh no, like that didn't happen. And, you know, like trying to make it, and then the grief hits and then it's depression and then we can kind of start to get on with life again, right? That's like in, in short, yeah? So when we've buried something, um, so we've buried it and then all of a sudden, like, I don't know, four, six months later, we're like, oh my God, I didn't realize I buried that. It's because you've been in shock, okay? And shock is a something, like is a, is a mechanism that helps us still function in life and kind of keep going, right? It's a, you know, shock is a mechanism. Like say for example, like this random analogy just came to mind. Say for example, um, you've been, so a couple of weird ass analogies are coming to mind. Um, Cause I don't know how this would be <laughs> like in a way right say if you started getting attacked by an animal like a saber tooth tiger or something like I don't know you'd get away from that but say for example you know like you, you've got a big slice or something from an animal you, the shock helps you to freaking bolt the fuck out of there like do you know what I mean like shock is so that you don't feel the pain and you just you can bolt and survive right like shock is a survival mechanism and then you know you'll get somewhere and you'll maybe start to feel faint because there's too much blood coming out for example like I don't know why that analogy came to mind but and then you can kind of hide somewhere and then all of a sudden the shock will wear off and you'll be like oh my god the pain right like who's experienced that where you've hurt yourself didn't even know you kind of kept going and then you're just like oh my god like and then the pain kicks in yeah so shock is a survival mechanism so now I want to talk I know that's a really kind of extreme example but the reason I'm saying that is because the grief cycle is a mechanism process in the human psyche being body it's it's a it's something that always happens now you don't have to be so dramatic in say that example the grief cycle starts with any change yeah whether um, it's a relationship breakup whether it's um, somebody who has like passed away whether, you know, I always use this example, like someone wants to catch up, you know, have coffee or something, and then at the last minute they pull out, like the grief cycle is triggered. You're like in shock. You're like, oh, now what am I supposed to do? Like, you know, and then you go through the cycle of the grief cycle, right? So it doesn't have to be <laughs> like, you know, being sliced open by a seven tooth tiger. I do not know <laughs> why that example is coming up. Um, so, yeah so what was I saying about that oh and because like and that's what I was saying like when we bury things right when something happens in our life and you know like that shock can last for quite some time six eight twelve months two years people can be living in shock and not have dealt with it because 
dealt with the feelings because they've just buried it because that's, they don't know how to, right? Okay, so Emma says, my heart is full of love, but I've only just started accepting putting myself first simultaneously, upsetting family as putting my non-existent boundaries in place when it comes to my family. It's causing so much upset. Yeah, yeah, it does. Especially when we've been running on the people pleaser mode and caring for everyone else for a long time. It's change. Nobody likes change. They're going to be experiencing the cycles of the grief cycle. You're going to be experiencing the cycles of the grief cycle and a pile of guilt as well. Like it's very normal. It's very normal. Yes, we do have a relationship with our health, 100%. Uh, Emma says, I will wait for the right kind of love. I honestly don't need a relationship. I mean it. I mean it. <laughs> yep, awesome. You're very clear. So Lena says, I cleaned out my house of old stuff and found lots of cool stuff and redecorated my house. Found some of necklace. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, this stone's from Egypt. My friend got this from Egypt for me. Not really cool to wear it today for some reason. Adrenaline, yes, running on adrenaline, exactly. Yeah, the shock. Yeah, and so that happens in any situation that, you know, is a change. So, and, and it's, a, it's a survival mechanism. It's a way to process family emotions, you know, like we'll still be going through it, but then we're gonna kind of kick into gear and get on with it as well, you know? So this is why, you know, I'm really passionate about teaching people about the grief cycle, how to support yourself, like what it's about, what to do, because as soon as we have that understanding, you wanna keep your intuition clear. You wanna keep, you know, your connection to your intuition and, you know, decipher between intuition and guilt or, um, you know just other people's emotions and feelings it's like understand the understand the grief cycle because then you will understand your intuition on a deeper level then you will understand that when something happens you'll be like okay like you've got this awareness you're like okay shock grief anger depression like moving on sort of thing right um they say all the pyramids in egypt are going to be activated tomorrow ah yes the lion's gate right talk about lion's gate the lion's gate is the 8th of the 8th so it's the 7th day I'm pretty sure is that interesting that's why I felt cool I haven't actually worn this for ages so thanks for pointing that out makes a lot of sense <laughs> yeah the lion's gate like literally walking into a new world yeah is like the lion's gate um, so it's like the halfway point between spring and equinox um, and yeah like planetary lines up oh yeah that's awesome that makes so much sense Oh, of course it does. <laughs> like, I honestly haven't worn this for so long. Um, I was going to say something about the Lion's Gate. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we're talking about Lion's Gate. We're talking about the heart chakra. And we're talking about listen to. You remember seeing a symbol from the Lion's Gate meditation? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's right. So when we're walking into a whole nother world, right? Talk about the throat chakra and stepping into our heart chakra, we've just, right? All people, not all people, but a lot of people are feeling grief that they've buried. They're like, I don't know why I'm crying, that was me. And a lot of my clients and a lot of other people that message me and they're like, I've been crying too. And I'm like, yeah, it's like, we're like, and I'm like, yeah, we are shifting into the heart, but also we're releasing all those roles. We're releasing all those facades that we've like been living for other people and like swallowing their truth. We're like, like clearing all that out we're like actually that's not in alignment with my truth that's not me that's not in alignment with my heart right because we can be like living these like roles and something can feel off in our heart and we don't listen to that because these roles are really strong they're a mechanism of survival like all that instinctual stuff right it's very connected to base chakra to connected to the um the flight or fight what is it like the reptilian part of our brain like that's a survival mechanism like on earth right and so when we are looking at um like releasing all of this when we do that yeah when we go actually that's not my truth and i've been trying to live that truth because i've been trying to get acceptance from that person and then we discover all these like threads and we're like oh my god and so then we release all this and so talking about like how does the How's the, the timing of the lion's gate and the heart chakra, right? And it's like, and then we step into the heart chakra. We've stepped into actually feeling our truth, feeling what's right for us. And sometimes we can go, oh, but that's not, that's not okay. Because 
uh, number one, I've never actually followed my heart and it feels foreign, even though it feels really right, but we kind of have these guilt and these parts might still be having a say and, oh, but what about, right? And it's like, when well, we need to keep tending to these parts for a little bit so then we can habitually change our thoughts and thinking to being okay with living our heart's truth. Now, when we do this and step in and follow our heart, sometimes there's like a pile of grief, like a reconnection grief to self about how long you've actually not been there for yourself, about how long you've been like forgetting about yourself and not living your heart's truth because you've been trying to get acceptance or like something from someone else. And of course we can never receive that, right? Um, to feel loved. And so when we step into our heart, it's like a whole new world. We can feel very fucking vulnerable. We can be doubting ourselves. We can be like, and there's like all this space and it can be like really um, confronting and vulnerable and feel like nobody's there, but everybody's there at the same time because all of a sudden it feels very full in a way of a reconnection full to self. And it's kind of like, you know, you've kind of like create this almost bubble of um, not protection, but it's kind of like, it feels really good because you're finally in your heart but sometimes that comes with a pile of grief to like go, oh my God, like how come I haven't been doing this for so long? Like, where have I been, right? And it's like we remove all the masks and the illusion of what we've been living to drop in to the heart. Now the heart, the ears, the heart and the base, I always say are so interconnected, right? When we're working on the heart, we're working on the ears, working on the base, and it's very physical reality. Yeah? The heart is green. The, you know, oh, there's no green. <laughs> there's all this green here that I can see. You guys can't see it. Like the green is a big cover on the earth and so is the blue, right? The green is where we connect, where we feel connected. And if we don't feel like we can be in a loving relationship and not feel connected to it. Like we can be in a relationship and not feel connected to it. Why? Because we don't, we're not connected to our own heart. Now, how do we start being connected to our heart? It's obviously listening to what our heart wants and following that and sometimes we can do that and we're like yeah i gotta follow my heart and do this and then all of a sudden like the mind will go oh no you can't do that because and then the mind goes the mind's very strong right the mind is very strong because society has been brought up in the mind training the mind for 12 years at school these children that are coming through on the earth now are highly tapped in they don't they're not there to sit on the earth. Like, they, you know, our, society, our school systems need to be changed. Like, we all know that, right? But what I'm saying is the mind is very strong. And this is why I'm always saying mindset work, mindset, mindset, mindset. Like, are you doing mindset work? Are you journaling? Are you, like, not just once or twice, like, every freaking day. Every day. Why? Because we need to train it to be listening to the heart. We need to train it to be open to the heart. We need to train it to listen to the heart for this to not be in fear yeah, like society has trained us to be, but to be in here and to trust that and move forward. And even when the mind goes, oh, but you can't. And we're like, it's okay. I'm safe. I'm following this way. Right. And this is where the connection to here comes in and talking to these parts so that can be reconnected, not disconnected and shut off. And no, 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 no. Right. Archangel Raphael does have a green light. He does. He does. Um, wow, I was training on a new well-being class today. It was about lines, pyramids, strength, and bravery. Yes, yes, yes. I was so much, but I knew heart chakra was coming, so I let it flow. I dyed my hair pink and purple to uplift myself. Yes, I love that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So when we're like following our heart and this vulnerable place, like when it is, it is a training. It is a trusting yourself because not only will your mind you know talk your heart out of anything because the mind is trained for negativity that's what society has been brought up in and that's why when we first you know step into this world like we can do all this internal work and our mind's still running the show yeah because we must train our mind as well because there's habitual like you know like the brain neural pathways are quite thick yeah on certain ways of thinking on certain ways of being so we need to train them and we can do all this cleaning out subconscious, but these are still really strong and that's why mindset works so important and powerful to train our brain to think a different way in more alignment with our heart. So I am open and receptive to new experiences. I'm open to opportunities. I am I am starting to feel really safe in the world. 
I'm really trusting myself. I'm coming into deep alignment with what I'm meant to do every single day. I'm grateful to be able to wake up and feel the sun. I'm grateful to hear the sounds of life. I'm open to listening to my intuition and trusting it every, every single day. Like those sorts of things are like what we should be thinking about all the time. That comes in a training and a trust in trusting and following that, but it comes in choosing to train your mind and your brain to bring together, yeah? So, I was just tuning in to what else needs to be said on the heart chakra. So when we start listening to the heart, as I said, we'll probably start feeling, yeah? As soon as the crown chakra is activated, the heart is activated, yeah? This divine light and ideas and inspiration and our purpose and the connection to source, yeah, is automatically aligned with our heart because our heart has the same resonance as the earth. So if you're feeling off, that's why everyone's like, go out in nature. When was the last time you spent time in nature without, you know, technology, you know, like go and reset your energy field, like put your feet on the earth, like reconnect back to the earth. Like our physical human vibrations are the same resonance as the earth, right? So if you're feeling off, ask yourself, when did I last spend time in nature? And if it was over 24 hours, then you need to get in nature, right? It's kind of like nature's the best medicine, yeah? It's the best medicine. That sleep, water, yeah? Nature is the best medicine. So when we start feeling, knowing and allowing, because we're going to have the grief come up, like trusting yourself in that experience of feeling comfortable with feeling your feelings because a lot of people are not comfortable feeling their feelings. A lot of people can't cry because they're so shut down from such a long period of time in not expressing their feelings because as a child they were shut down. So when you do start to start feeling your feelings for the first time, maybe ever, notice, notice the self-talk. Uh, no, it's not safe to feel or just like I can't feel, like I don't feel, or I stop myself crying. It's like, well, like ask yourself, why don't I feel safe to cry? Why don't I feel safe to express who I am? Like explore that, unpick that, travel that, right? Because that's the little part of you that's being shut down, that's vibrating and reflecting with everybody in your reality, trying to get that attention, trying to get your attention through the physical. So Emma, what just came to mind for me, for you and I just then was like, so like your family are kicking up singing, yes, it's important to go and do, you know, follow your heart doing exactly what you're doing, but to help the process of why everyone's kicking up a stink, look at those parts of you that are like, you know, still wanting to uh, people please, even though there's a stronger part that's kind of kicked in and it's like, no, nope, I'm doing my own thing. Like talk to the part that used to be there for them. Like this would be like having this conversation with the part of you that's got the drive to just do your thing now. And then this part of you that is really like wanting to um, still be there for them. Yeah, because this is where the guilt will start kicking in from under there. So when we're doing shadow work, it's like looking at all the parts. Yeah. That's what I'm like walking at. I'm trying to, yes, yeah. So looking at both, getting both those parts communicating together. So the part of you that was moving on and the part of you that's still like, <laughs> but I used to be there for them and I feel so bad. Like, you know, it's like getting both of them on board and moving forward together. It's like, I can still be there for them because this is the, the reality of it is that when we're there for ourselves, we're there for other people in a higher capacity. Yeah. When we're only there for others, then these parts are like, you know, like drain or you know shut down and that's when we get burnt out because they're like this weight and anchor but when we bring them up and we start doing what's right for us bringing this part up and you know having that communication so we're able to move forward together and be able to like like balance the boat is the analogy i'm getting for some reason uh yes i love them and it's so hard they're elderly they need me so much guilt catholic mother yes yeah so definitely using the shadow meditation and talking to both those parts would definitely help with that. All right, is there anything else that wants to be shared about the heart chakra? If anyone's got any questions about the heart chakra, so clear sentience, feeling, trusting yourself, obviously clearing your energy every day is so important. So there's in the, the uh, star being guide meditation bundle, like there's the sponge clearing meditation and that's like the next level clairsentient, um, like clairsentient 
it's like a sponge yeah like we absorb energy like a sponge like any empath would be like I feel everything and we're just like yeah right there's chakra clearing and then there's sponge clearing the sponge clearing is like so important it's like actually lifting other people out of your system um, yes guilt or feeling of not being worthy comes in to ruin things yeah and that's a sabotage right so it's kind of like you know when you do the shadow meditation yes you can talk to one part but then you can also um, you know the advanced shadow meditation is actually having a communication with all of these parts right and if you meditate regularly you might be able to just call them in and do that yourself right yes using the light from your sun from the sun to clear your energy getting out in nature jumping up and down exercise getting in your body because if you're not in your body who is on an energetic level as well as you know spiritual level how do I stop trying to prove myself for love? Yeah, so this is the part of you that's not feeling worthy underneath, like um, Amanda just said. So it's kind of like, right, time to like do what I'm gonna do because well, nobody fucking wants me. And it's like, well, fine, I'm just gonna go and do this and then I'll be good enough, right? So when it's like looking at the reason and the drive and you know, like I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs and myself included, it's kind of like even uh, it's probably earlier this year, I think. I even realized, you probably um, will remember me talking about it in one of my blogs. Like, I realized this thing. I was like, part of my drive, right? That didn't even, it was so unconscious running. Part of my drive for building like an empire, making billions of dollars, was so like this part of me that as a child, like, I was the eldest of three younger siblings and um, so four in, in total and I was like I had to look after everybody and we never really had much money growing up and so it was always an issue and then like my mum was always unhappy and like the relationship and so like me like stepping into that right from like I said yesterday in like the two to three years of age three to four it was because I had a memory come back from a releasing trauma session and it was fucking confronting because I'd never seen that part of myself before and it was just like looking at like this like from back then like this driver from back then it's like you know when i you know made my 100k like this is when it all kind of surfaced it was just like oh like my mum still doesn't accept me or my mum was kind of like i was like i lost all this drive i lost all this purpose i was just like well what the fuck like you know but i didn't even realize it was running right so like this part of me this three to four year old self was like it's okay mom I'll go and make us lots of money because it was always the issue right growing up and I was just like wow wow I didn't even know that was driving the boat <laughs> right so we've got like all these different drivers to come in and that's when we look at like what what is the parts in our heart that we have buried that are driving these forces yeah I have a feeling my phone's gonna overheat in a minute so if it cuts out that's the that's why um you're making my day just by being near the water hearing the waves yes <laughs> yeah it's beautiful spot on yes and that's why it's so important right and this is like when we're looking at so the heart and then underneath like i said is the solar plexus remember when we drop down into a chakra the next chakra is already activated so at the solar plexus self-worth self-esteem feeling good enough like all of that yeah so if we're like yeah like we feel confident as a kid and we're like yeah i'm gonna do this and this and the parents around you or the adults or whoever around you go you can't do that because they're projecting their own stuff onto you you can't do that you're never going to be good enough you're never going to succeed you're never blah, blah 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 whatever the fucking story is right from their own passed down of how they were raised yeah and so like and then we're like oh like one number one shut the voice down and then the heart like oh i better not express myself my feelings are not important um, it's not okay to want what I want, my heart want. Oh, so I'm not good enough. And then we shut down and then it goes deeper. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like the whole thing right down and then we're just walking around all close off. Yeah. That scares me, not being conscious of buried issues. Well, the thing is, is that nobody's conscious 100% of the time. Like, nobody. Nobody on this planet is conscious of their stuff, of all of their stuff, all of the time. Like that is not a reality. If we were, we would not be in this dimension, like period. So any any person that walks around going, I'm so conscious and I'm so spiritual and I'm 
I know all my stuff, like, watch out for those people, right? Nobody is conscious of their stuff, you know? Like, I have some people message me when I share my heart in my blogs and I'm like uncovering all this buried stuff and even, it was around, it must have been February, March when I shared, I think I shared it on a live stream or something when I realized that the little girl in me was trying to make money for mum, like, still, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, and I didn't even realize that that was there, that buried stuff, right? I think it was that, and I think it was something else. And do you know, I had people message me going, oh, well, that's a bit weird. You're like this spiritual teacher, but you didn't even know you had buried this stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm human, man. <laughs> like, come on, like, I am not, you know, like I, you know, use the tools, but nobody is conscious 100% of the time. Like, and I go through the same processes as any other human on the planet. I bury stuff and then it becomes conscious and then I deal with it. Like that's kind of how life is. It's a cycle of night and day. It's a cycle of being clear about what's going on and then at the night time it's a little bit darker and it's hard to see what's going on. Like that's a constant cycle, yeah? Constant cycle of feelings, of emotions, of all of that. My story, whole life, yeah. Yeah, thank you for showing my heart. It's nice to walk with you, thank you, Emma. Yeah. So, is there anything else that wants to be shared about the heart chakra at this point in time? Okay, so I keep getting that resonance, yeah? I keep hearing about the resonance and the earth resonance and our heart resonance and the heart frequency. So, you know, like they talk about the Schumann's resonance and it's like increasing and um, all of that and we're increasing our vibration and all of that and this is where like Leanne had said the other day around like the Chiron had mentioned that it you know it's like 33% conscious and you know the rest subconscious now and I'm like yeah that feels really right it's like the more we become conscious you know like the more we unpack and re you know clear our past life karma and all that sort of stuff like the more that's becoming conscious and so as we do that there's not so much uh, like buried feelings in the heart yeah I remember I said like the clairsentience is our heart chakra and the clairsentience is it, you know people say it's your gut feeling it's like yeah it's your heart it's this whole you know like space right so when you know like we can deal when we become more conscious there's not as much shit in our subconscious of course there's still stuff right there's always going to be stuff but we just wouldn't be in this dimension but the more we deal with our stuff and our emotions what happens is we create space in our heart now like i said like there's like these parts of ourselves that we bury but when we bring light and consciousness to them and pull them up so to speak um we um and we pull them up like it naturally feels with love there you know it's not a buried kind of thing in the ground like if you can imagine literally burying something in the earth it creates like a, a block right we're putting something in the earth um, that's not so supposed to be there sort of thing and so it creates this block in the earth and what comes to mind is all the rubbish and the dumps right how interesting um, and so like when we've buried that it creates this block in your subconscious so when we pull that out the earth's energy naturally fills that space again. It's like a reconnection back to what's supposed to be there in a natural space. So our heart also does that when we're clearing out hurts, trauma, pain and stuff like that. We become lighter. Our vibration and natural health comes back because our body and even the earth, if anything is given a chance, it will return to homeostasis. It will thrive. Like, that is our natural state of being. Everything is trying to get back to that natural state of homeostasis all the time. So when we provide an environment that allows it to thrive, it will, right? And I keep getting that message around the heart and the more like we clear out the hurts and traumas and stuff. And I spoke about this, I think it was in one of the Psychic Reading Sundays not too long ago that we do this big chunk of clearing and all of a sudden there's this space like there's space and we're like come from all this trauma and drama and shit going on in our life and we've done a lot of work and then all of a sudden it's kind of like oh like like we're waiting for the next thing it's like like we're not used to the space this is where the brain training comes in and like training ourselves it's okay for space it's okay for the natural resonance 
it's okay this is journaling stuff it's okay for me to feel peace it's I feel safe when I feel peace I'm learning to feel safe when I feel peace I'm learning to feel safe in the space yeah really really important I tell myself to just chill yes yes do you have to go do you have to go through all chakras to clear or can you just focus on one or two you need to trust yourself about that yeah like trust yourself on you know like maybe one chakra really needs a lot of like work at the moment you know and that's where you need to trust yourself I personally just like having a shower I wouldn't just wash my arms I wouldn't just put my arms in and just wash my arms like I'd want to have a whole shower so yeah trust yourself with what feels right for you but you might be working on clearing out a lot of relationship pain so you might be working with the third eye and um, the heart at the same time or you know what I mean like you might be working on one chakra for a period of time more than another but for general maintenance so to speak I would be personally clearing all chakras I always start things and never finish them I wonder if there is a, a hurried reason a buried reason for it yes not feeling good enough or what happens um, when you do start something like I mean if you were going to finish something like is it going to be taken away from you um, if you are good enough like are you going to get acceptance so maybe I just won't become good enough because I get acceptance being who I am like all like this you know like when you were a child what happened did you build an amazing castle for example and someone came and said that's crap knocked it around like knocked it down and like why did you do that like you're stupid so now you don't ever finish things like do you know what I mean it could be something like that in there for sure Focus on the chakras most blocked first. Yes, yeah. If you're being called to a particular chakra, there's obviously a reason. As a kid, I had a weird hobby to bury everything. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Like keeping it safe so no one will take it away from me. I don't know, explore that, that taking away or getting that strongly for you, Alina. Somebody tried to tell me that without opening the five higher chakras above our heads that we can't be fully aligned to our soul's purpose. This scared me as I wasn't aware wasn't fully aware of five do you know what there is thousands of chakras in our body thousands not not seven not eight not 15 not 19 thousands thousands of chakras yeah just like there's thousands there's heaps of meridian lines just like there's heaps of acupuncture points like there is thousands of chakras like every single point is pretty much a chakra it opens to energy it allows energy to come in and out it just so happens that these ones have been taught through society and that's what everyone's focused on yeah you want to amplify your own reality you want to amplify your own purpose you trust your intuition with what people say to you if you don't open those five chakras above your soul like above your head you're not going to open your life purpose it's not going to happen you need to do it this way really who are you gonna trust yourself like obviously it's come to you for a reason it's like oh maybe I can explore that trust your intuition about what feels right for you is there five is there ten is there fifteen is there a whole lot of them that goes to your star soul home do you know what I mean trust 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 your intuition when other information comes to you for a certain reason definitely but just make sure you're not swallowing their truth and especially if they're going that's not the right way it's only this way and if you don't do it like this it's not gonna work pointing fingers three fingers pointing back at them <laughs> that the fifth eye looking into that but not sure if should if chakras are out of balance again trust yourself something will only be out of balance something will only be wrong something will only be something if you think it is right and if you start doing something it doesn't feel right we'll find what is for you because every single person has a different experience of their reality every single person is filtering through their own upbringing and their own childhood every single person is only teaching from their like awareness of consciousness and what they've experienced in life with all these filters and belief systems and society on top of that like you know, and this is why I'm like, trust intuition, clear your energy, dig deeper, trust your intuition. What does your intuition say? That's why I always say, don't listen to me. Listen to what your intuition says about all the information that you're listening to all around the world. Yeah? 
Like our chakra work, I'll only be partially working. Yeah, maybe if you think that, you're like, oh shit, this chakra's not functioning properly, so I'm not gonna be functioning properly. Maybe, maybe you just need to bring more conscious awareness to it because in that moment, it's become conscious. Oh shit, what about this? Oh, I've forgotten about my solar plexus chakra. You know, this is the 70 odd percent subconscious, all of a sudden a little piece of it's come into your conscious awareness. And it's just time to deal with that very piece. Do you know what I mean? We can't be 100% conscious all the time. We just wouldn't be in this dimension. It's not that we can't, we just wouldn't be in this dimension, right? Okay, I don't get told I can't do it or not good enough, just never had support or praise. I know self-praise is important, but I style praise is good too. Yes. Is it is it me just giving a vibe I don't need recognition? Probably. Um, I do you feel safe to be seen? Yeah, sometimes we hide in the background so we don't feel safe to be seen or worthy enough to be seen or heard or listened to or acknowledged. Laura, yeah, thank you. Thought there was like a process before getting to that one. Would love to know the best meditation online to unblock. Yeah, many meditations to unblock, you know, and again, like I always say, like any chakra clearing meditation. So in my free essentials meditation pack, there's six free meditations in there. Um, the internal compass chakra clearing is like the one you can do every day. It's like six to seven minutes long. You can listen to it while you're doing the dishes. You can multitask, hanging the washing out, listen to it. Um, you can do it twice a day. As many times as you have a shower, I recommend doing that meditation, right? And the reason I say you can do it multitasking, of course, sitting down and being still and fully present with it um, is going to be quite powerful in the conscious awareness of it. But if you're busy in a modern day life, I'm like, let's make it work rather than, I don't have time to meditate, right? So let's make it work. Because the more you do it, the more you'll want to do it because you'll start to feel the difference. You're also strengthening your energy because you're bringing conscious awareness to that meditate like to your energy field not just to chakras but to your energy field and what's in it and what's not in it it's a starting point you want to dig deeper then you move through the different layers of conscious awareness to be able to dig deeper my trust intuition course is exactly that yeah but the free meditation so if you go to my website realityawareness.com and you scroll down on the home page you'll see the audio meditations you'll see there's like meditations you can buy but it should Pretty sure it's on there the essentials meditation pack it's the free essentials pack there's six of them in there there's also training videos in there so once you log in um, once you've signed up you'll be able to log in onto my website and there's training videos like I go through and explain this is why we do it like this this is why I say this this is why this comes in like this because then you've got a deeper understanding of what you're actually doing with that meditation and then you can use it in other situations that are not the meditation. It's very powerful. We become the walking meditation. Yeah, we become clear in our intuition all the time rather than just sitting down meditating, right? And it's a starting point. It's a starting point. Okay. Uh, Amanda says, but when we've lived in the mind from an early, as we can remember, we don't know anything else. Yes, exactly, yeah. Well, not sure about anyone else, but yes. <laughs> yeah, the mind rules, and this is why it's so important. This is when we have a spiritual awakening, right? If you haven't watched the crown chakra, please watch the crown chakra that we've already done. The crown chakra is like once when we wake up and we open and then we receive the light and awareness, conscious awareness of a different reality, right? That's what a spiritual awakening is. We're like, whoa. And then we're like rewiring as we come down through each of the chakras, bringing that new awareness in, yeah? But it does, it takes training, it takes a discipline, it takes, you know, that's why the 12 divine steps, you know, we're coming up to responsibility on Monday, Sunday, Monday, depending on where you are in the world, divine step number eight to awakening your purpose is responsibility. It's like taking divine responsibility for every single area of your life, meaning your energy, meaning your mindset, meaning how you care for yourself, meaning the relationships that you have in your life, like everything, you know, taking responsibility, radical responsibility for every single aspect of your life. I'm happy with the chakras I'm aware of. Yep, it's too complicated at this point for others to add more. I suppose everyone's at their own level of awareness and learning. Yes, yeah, and in that free meditation pack, there's a really long meditation in there called the Next Wave Ascension Healing Meditation. Um, it's about 
for, I think it's about 50 minutes long. So it's really long. It's also one to four sleep to. Um, but I actually go through and like heal and repair. So not just the chakra. So you've got the crown and the third eye, but it actually goes through and repairs the connection between say the crown and the third eye, right? And repairs the connection between the chakras as well as the chakra itself. So that's really awesome as well. Taking it to the next level in a way. Yes, me too, but training the brain that our heart, that heart a bigger place. Yes, it's a training, it's a training. I always say dropping your mind into your heart. Right, if you're stuck in your head and there's obsessive thoughts going on, it's like, okay, dropping my mind into my heart. Now you might be like, well, how the fuck do you do that, Hannah? It's kind of like you tell your brain to drop into your heart. Usually, usually your brain's going at 50 miles an hour because you've got feelings that you don't want to feel and you're disassociated and you're stuck in your head doing da -da 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 -da, and actually you just need a big cry and you don't want to face that cry because it's <laughs> scary to cry in a way, right? I have to make time for the shower, not the meditations. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so good. It's so good. All right. Is there anything else that wants to come through about the heart? Or does anyone else have any other questions about the heart chakra? If you need that meditation and you can't find it, please send me a message. Um, that's really important. Yeah, you're so welcome, Colleen. Thank you. Thank you. It's okay when your thought patterns are hurting yourself, but not when it starts to affect your husband and kids. That's not on. Yeah, okay. So even, even it's not okay when your thought patterns are hurting yourself. No. <laughs> No, because that's you beating yourself up and burying yourself more. That's you, right? And I want to point out, if you think, if you think that this inside yourself about your own self is not affecting your closest relationships or anyone around you, uh -uh, think again. Have you seen Dr. Emoto's work about how our thoughts affect water? If you Google Dr. Emoto, and you'll see the crystals, but our thoughts, right? Our thoughts affect water molecules. And he's put like, I love you and I hate you underneath pieces of, uh, underneath things of water, frozen them, looked at the molecules after I love you, not even said it, written it on a piece of paper. I love you, I hate you. Looked at these frozen molecules under a microscope, a special scientific microscope. These look like beautiful snowflakes. This one looks like a cancer cell. If you think that you having your own negative self-talk is only hurting you, mm -mm. your energy is rippling out, especially to your kids, right? And this is where it's kind of like how you were spoken to as a kid and your upbringing. If you're still got that internal reality going on, your kids are still taking that on. And that's why it takes us up to that divine responsibility to do our internal work to clear this because as we clear this, our kids don't carry it anymore. The more work we do on ourselves, our kids shift by osmosis because where do we work? The generation stops here. Yeah, the generation karmic, bullshit, negativity, abuse stops here and it stops with your own self and that's where it's coming into loving your own self and having that deep love and self-care and awareness and self-love talk around self. I'm feeling really hurt. I'm really angry. I don't know how to support myself right now, but I'm gonna find support. Help me find support, God. Riding and covered in goosebumps, as I say that, it is so important. It is so important. Yes, my energy almost cost my family. Yes, it's so important. So important. So important. No, it's not too late. No, right? And this is the thing. Anybody can heal from anything if they are willing to. And as I said, our kids shift by osmosis while we're doing the work. Yeah? The more work we do on ourselves, our kids shift automatically. The people around us shift automatically. Yeah, I have a divine responsibility to manage my energy, to like look at myself and what I'm portraying and putting into the world because this subconscious stuff is also putting into the world. So the more we can work on coming into that space and shifting this, like, and this is why I say it's not just once or twice, it's just like mindset and journaling. It's not once or twice. This is like a lifelong, like this is the rest of your life, right? See sympathetic magic, oh awesome. Yeah, vibrational proximity, mental, emotional, spiritual, yes. You can even do those um, experiments yourself, like get rice and water and for 30 days, say I love you in one and I hate you in another and see which ferments and see which goes moldy, right? So important. 
I asked that ones for help God and I came up with my cleaning business that lasted me for seven years until it was crashed, yes. Yeah. And that's like, yeah, like looking at looking at. So yeah, I was doing that to myself today, nagging my own self. Yeah. And that's when you said you asked for God. Yes. Until it crashed now. So I'm wondering if you ask God what is your next divine responsibility that you are supposed to do, what comes through, right? Maybe you could journal on that. Dear God, what is my next divine responsibility? What is my next path that I am supposed to walk on right now? Please show me. Right? Just mantra over and over and over again. Yeah? Listen to your heart and where it's guiding you of what's right for you. Trust the feelings in your heart. Yeah. You're so very welcome guys. Right, is there anything else that wants to come through for the heart? Heart feels pretty clear. I think that's all for the heart. So welcome guys. So we are in August currently at the time of this live stream and this is marking three incredibly huge and like oh my goodness years of Tuesday Tarot. I've never missed a Tuesday as the plane is taking off. We are taking off, right? Um, to celebrate Tuesday Tarot, I've been guided to release my three month goal reacher program. So if you're wanting unlimited access to me via text message, voice message and constantly having me in your pocket. Hannah, what about this? What about this question? What about this? What about when this happens? What about this? And oh my God, this is happening. Can you please give me guidance on this? Like if you want me in your pocket via WhatsApp, voice message, text message, unlimited psychic readings, unlimited questions, then the three month goal reacher program is for you. There's also uh, 30 minute phone calls in there. There's three distance healings and there's a cracking the code session. This goal reacher program is usually nearly three and a half gram. For the month of August, I'm releasing it for $9.97. So that's a pretty big price drop from three and a half thousand, and that is to celebrate three incredible years and a lot of dedication, commitment, and walking through so many rings of fire to get to where I am now. And I am deeply celebrating how much the Tuesday Tarot supports you. And every week when I send out Tuesday Tarot and I get you know, that goes out to like over a thousand people or more each week. And I, the amount of response that I get back from Tuesday Tarot alone saying, oh my God, it's so spot on. Oh my God, you're helping me so much. Like that is a humbled service that I just feel so called to do. And I turn up even when I don't feel like it and I still get amazing response from you guys. And there's a way I've supported you for three years. So if you would like to take that deeper, uh, I'll put the link um, in the heading as well. You'll see the Go to program come up or send me a message about it for the month of August. So it is $9.97. Um, yes, would love to carry me around in your pocket. Yes. Yes. Five-year-old drew the same picture as you did. The cracking the code. Yes, that's right. That cracking the code with you, Alina, was so fucking powerful. I love those sessions, man. Yeah, Tuesday Tarot is always spot on and said it's you Alina I was like wow <laughs> how in the hell did he do that it's so amazing it's like if you need any more confirmation Alina of what Hannah just channeled through for you here here's a five-year-old drawing the same freaking thing that's so freaking awesome <laughs> I love that so much oh the cracking the code sessions are so amazing I had another client on Monday evening about that and just what comes through like in that so cracking the code if you guys don't know is like uncovering your life purpose gift so you know how there's some people that are like mermaids or angels or star people like the cracking the code I've been doing them for about a year now and like we get in session and just like intuitively like whatever your gifts are whether you've got angel wings or star being gifts or something else from the earth like it's quite phenomenal what comes through and everyone is so different so I think it's so incredible yeah yeah all right thanks guys if you think this heart chakra live stream can help somebody please share it or tag them in the comments or send it in a private message to them if you're watching on youtube remember to like and subscribe i love you guys heaps see you soon namaste